Alright, in this video, let's take a quick look at file groups and what file groups are. Um, now, before we talk about file groups, let's talk about the three types of files associated with the with the database files. All right, this comes this all this right. None of this is mine. All this is copy and pasted right off Microsoft site. All right. Uh, why is that important? Well, I didn't make it up. Number one, and number two, it, it quickly lets us identify what we can do with these files and and how we can best use file groups. All right. So there are only three types of files. All right. Uh, I actually had an interview recently, and the uh, the gentleman, one gentleman, who who was a DBA, I'm not sure if he was a SQL Server DBA, wanted to argue and, and said that uh, indexes uh, were a type of file. Uh, folks, indexes are not a type of file. Uh, you can place indexes, you can place non-clustered indexes on their own drive for performance reasons, uh, for performance gain. Uh, but there is no, um, for example, .idx file. All right, doesn't exist. All right, so what we have in SQL, we, we have three files. We have the primary data files, secondary data files, and log files. That's it. The primary are .mdf, secondary are .ndf, and the log files are .ldf. All right. I don't know why they chose n uh, mdf. Maybe my uh, main data file. Maybe Microsoft data file. Uh, don't know. N uh, shouldn't it be like s for secondary data file? Uh, who, who knows? Who cares? Uh, this is what we have. All right. So, database objects and files are grouped together in file groups. All right. File groups are these logical entities. All right. When you create a file group, there's nothing in it. It's a group. It's just this, this empty container. All right. Until you put something in it. All right. And we'll show you that in a second. All right. So once we create these, well, so why would you do that? Why would you create these empty containers? Well, because it's much easier to manage, or to, to put the files in these logical groupings. Alright, so we've got two types of file groups. Alright, uh, we've got the primary and the user find, and this is a great sentence, right? <laughs> this first one. The primary file group contains the primary data file and any other files not specifically assigned to another file group. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> it's, that, that line just kills me. All right. So if we go look right here, let's take a quick, don't ignore this for a second. If we right click and we look at the properties on this and we go to our file groups tab, the properties of the of the database, you can see uh, the data file, right, is assigned to the primary file group. All right, let's cancel. Well, no, let's leave that there. That's fine. Let's go back and look. All right. So we have two kinds, right? The primary and we have the user to find. All right, you don't define any; everything's primary, right? So once you define uh, user to find file groups, uh, our our file groups keyword create database. All right, all right, all right. All right, here's here's a big one, right? Log files are are never part of the file group. Log space is managed separately from data space. All right, that's that's pretty important. All right. Uh, no file can be a member of more than one file group. All right. Here's here's really a key sentence too, right? Um, and this is, is basically what I believe what Microsoft had in mind here. Tables, indexes, and large objects, large object data can be associated with the specified file group. And as a matter of fact, when you're creating, say, uh, say for example, you're creating a um, a partition table. Uh, we won't delve into partitioning. Partitioning is, let's say, your table is massive. You've got a uh, a billion rows, and your 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 system, your box simply isn't large enough, and the code simply isn't strong enough. And really, with a billion rows, they're not, I'm not sure what is strong enough. You need to cut that up. And what you do is you create separate file groups, and then you assign ranges to those uh, specified file groups. And you, you know, for example, the first data file may be January, and the second may be. February, March, and you can, or you can do it by numbers. There's, there's a, a, a lot of things you can do with partitioning, uh, but you can see the data can and tables can be partitions and indexes divided into units. All right, that's really the key benefit is a performance gain based on these logical groupings. And let's go take a look at the the window we had open here. So we've got the primary file group open, right? So let's say let's go and kill this. Uh, I had added one and. 
Uh, I wanted to show you the simplicity, but let's see how easy it is to add one of these. So we right click, right? Uh, oh wait, I just have, have the box open. So let's add one. All right. So how about we go file group dash one? All right. Now now look when I do this, right? Let's add another one. All right. So remember a minute ago we just said that when we create these file groups, all right, let's script this and look at the code. When we create these uh, logical containers, there's nothing in them. And you can see we haven't put anything in them. We have to put something in them. But first, we have to cre create the containers to do that, right? So look how simple the syntax is, right? <laughs> Alter database, the name of the database in question, and we're going to add a file group, the name of the file group, all right? It, that is pretty straightforward stuff. And now we have these logical containers, these file groups, we can now place data in. All right? Cool stuff, huh? All right, and that is the basics of what a file group is. And it's something I, I honestly don't believe it, it's taken advantage of enough. It's a great feature in SQL Server. And uh, if you have to uh, uh, take your data and, and splice your data up for any reason at all, uh, these, uh, these file groups are great. All right, uh, use them. And that's the end of the file group video. Thanks for watching, folks. Later.